all ran off by now. Let's start off from the beginning. So, welcome to my practice cast. Everything is A-OK -okay on my technical difficulty side, so it's like all good. I'm Drekken, and I'm hosting my third, third practice cast. This is my third practice cast, and if you're just joining me on my practice cast, the simple thing is I'm a noob caster. I've always wanted to do casting, always enjoyed the concept of casting, love my own voice, love listening to myself speak, so, but I've been a little shy doing, uh, being around cameras and stuff, so I'm like, why don't I practice casting and try to get over that? So here we are, practicing casting. So my goal is to be a better caster. Your job is to critique me and at the same time try to get some entertainment as I screw up. Do a little scratching. All right, so let's get right into it because I botched it up a bit. So we're gonna be watching my friend Zaros go up against Batman. Zaros gonna be playing Zerg and Batman is going to be playing Protoss. If you watched my last cast, you will see you, Zaros uh, played Zerg. I mean, played uh, Zerg last time. And let's jump right into it. Whoa, there we go. It's Heart of the Swarm. Yeah, Hearts of the Swarm. So let's jump into it. Go and load my game. Load. So yes, Zaros played Protoss last time um, during my last cast. And I'm uh, no, sorry, Zerg. Woo! I'm just being all crazy here. There we go. So let's jump right into it. In the bottom right hand corner, we have Batman. Ooh. Oh, and in the left hand corner, we have Zoros. Woo! I'm guessing uh, he Zaros select random, so this gentleman here is inquiring what race Zaros is. There was some little good luck, have fun. Oh, he's waiting. He's ho he actually is actually legit. He's actually seriously hoping that Zaros will tell him what race he's playing. Um, I don't think that's something to be expected. Oh, oh, this time I remember putting the names. I'm getting a little clever here. Oh, and it's a sign. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that. A little, some bad manners going on here. <laughs> some little bad manners going on. Oh, you know what I just realized? Zoro sent me a shitty replay. Sad face, because look at that. It's almost done. So someone's about to... <laughs> that was the best replay. <laughs> that was the best replay in the world. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you choose um, replays without even reviewing the person. Uh, so this is this is lesson one. Lesson one of casting. When someone sends you a replay, what you need to do is actually watch the replay. Or verify that the replay isn't shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that was hilarious. So, I'm not going to do my intro again. Uh, I'm just going to actually yell at Zaros next time I uh, get a replay from him. And um, we're going to go to a new one right away. We're not even going to really go into too many things. So let's hope this one isn't as silly as the last one that I just precasted. But the good news is Zaros won because of bad manners. So that could be a lesson. It could be something I'm not really sure. All right, let's get back into this. This should be another one. Okay, so no prime against Zaros. Oh, but this time Zaros is Protoss. Yeah, this looks like this looks like a, like an actual game here. We got like twenty nine minutes, so this looks like it will be an actual real game. Um, note to self: always check. So in the bottom right, we got no prime playing. Zerg, but top top left, we got Zaros playing the blue Protoss. Yes, blue Protoss. Mm. 
So, so far, some good luck, have fun, good manners this time. Let's see if they'll make it past each other. Does he? Oh, he sees the probe. Probe, you have been discovered, but I don't really know if he actually sees season. We just, all we know is he, you know, glances over. Okay, so... Mm, no sign of any... Nope, so we're not going to see a... Obviously, any sort of uh, quick rush towards Zaros here. Are we going to see... Oh, there it is. Dropping down the spawning pool at 14. So it's going a little standard... Obviously, standard build. Building his gateway. Any gas? Okay, so first gas. Nothing too unusual. Maybe we might see a second gas. I don't know. Depends how cheeky... Zaros is. Oh, get that. If by those of you who don't know, Zaros is British. So I like to throw in some British humor now and again. You know, cheeky bollocks, Lou. Doctor Who. You know, all that British stuff. Oh, no, no prime drone. Got a little shock of his life. Being time. Oh, cybernetic score to block it off. Now he gets in. Oh my god, this 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 drone is all like up in my grill. Those down the cybernetic cord, not looking to get distracted by this this drone shenanigans. Oh, we're gonna throw himself on his gas and obviously block Zeros from getting a dual gas. Getting the expansion. This is all very standard from for from a Zerg's point of view and and Protoss. None of this none of this is really you know throwing me for a loop here. Um. Got the overload here, obviously gonna try to get in. But let meantime, let's see Zaros play around with this um play around with this uh extractor. It's gonna have some fun over here. Pumping it out. Oh, not learning Oh, he is researching it there. I was like he isn't researching. But he is now coming to Zerg to Z Zealots. Almost says Zealot. So those of you who are watching my cast, you uh, I want you to do a drinking game for you to listening. I want you to do me a favor. Every time I say the word Zealot, take a shot. Um, I have a bad habit of saying Zealot. Uh, even though it is Zealot. Yes, I know it's Zealot. I've just been calling it Zealot since, you know, Brood Wars. And I haven't stopped since. So every time I say the word Zealot, feel free to take a shot, and then I'll measure my ability to say Zealot and Zealot based on how drunk my audience is. <laughs> if by the time I finish this cast, you are all sober, that means I did well. So, in the meantime, what's going on here? Nothing to so Stargate! We got a Stargate coming. This is exciting. Nah, see, this is. I knew that that's what he wanted. He wanted to put a gas down much earlier. Obviously, the extractor uh, blocked him, giving him a little of trouble. Throwing down the expansion. Ooh, this is cute. We got like a. We're throwing down a, an expansion and a. Oh, throw down the Stargate. Probably going to go for the harass here from the Oracle. Good idea, I would imagine, uh, to take down the oracle. Those oracles are vicious. I don't know how much damage they, how much like if two oracles can uh, one shot a drone, much like I've seen them do with probes. But if it does, two oracles will be enough to really cripple this economy. Um, our friend here, no prime, throwing down the spore colony, clearly prepared uh, for this harasses. This is some 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 yomi going on. Yay, Roach Warren! But this doesn't, he will not be able to uh, take down the oracles because obviously, if you don't know by this point, roaches do not hit air. Uh, so, Zaros probably can still fly these fly, fly these uh, oracles along this path, take some damage from this spore, craw uh, spore crawler, uh, but ignore it, obviously, and attack from this end. These, anno these queens will probably be a little irritating, but oh, and here comes one oracle. Do we got another one coming out? We do not. Uh, Zaros is a little tapped for his gas, obviously, because he got it out so late. This is going to be a problem. He's warping in some stalkers. Probably going to do want to do a little to protect his obviously expansion, protect this investment here, 
And we have, yep, two oracles, as I suspected. So two oracles. Are, oh, we've got a confrontation here. They see Zoros' pylon, but that's not really where all the action is happening. It's going to be right here with these two oracles here who are chilling. This guy's his wingman, and they're going to pick up some drones on a hot date. So let's see how they do. These drones are not protect. Oh, they're going to be protected in a, a little bit. Soon as these spore crawlers are... Or operational Zaros may want to try to come in here. They're probably going to run and hide underneath the spore collars. Spore collars are finished just as they arrive. Just as they arrive. This is not going to be as effective. Definitely not as effective as Zoros has wanted. They are everywhere. These guys are in trouble. These guys are absolutely in trouble. Absolutely nobody was picked up today. What a horrible dating scenario. Um, worst wingman ever. Clearly, they were in the wrong club. I don't know if you guys ever had that op that situation happen to you when you're in a club and you, you go to pick up and it just doesn't work out the way you planned it. You know, you get you get blocked. I haven't decided yet if my, my casts are going to be sort of PG-13 or PG-7 or whatever it is, or if they're going to be raw. We'll figure it out as my personality develops under this uh, under these practice casts. So, here we go. Throwing down the robo. Obviously, Zaros' investment in the Stargate was not in as effective as he had wanted. We got the cannons up, probably using it to go to protect himself. Oh, researching the plus one on the attack. Ooh. So both he, oh, both people, both players. Zaros the little head and workers, army supply is ahead for no prime but that's not really a big deal really so early but that's probably filled with like little zerglings and how are we looking in terms of roaches oh my god is this a nidus this is a nidus we're gonna see a nidus i guess this is what this guy's here for oh he's even upgraded he's ready for this he's ready he's pulling up he's gonna he's gonna definitely this is what we're i'm gonna assume it's gonna be right here zaros is uh right side is completely open Zaros is throwing down the cannons, obviously, in preparation for a drop from his left. But, obviously, the Nidus network is popping. Nidus Worm is detected. <laughs> Zaros is not aware of these Nidus, this Nidus Worm. About. He, I would imagine if his volume is turned up, he's going to hear like the, the digging sound of... Oh, he doesn't hear it. He is too busy here in his base. Now he hears it. He is now on high alert, and his drone, his probes are just, like, freaking out here. They are like, no! Mothership, though, I'm going to go try to neutralize this Nidus. Meanwhile, oh my goodness, fantastic force field from Zaros. Oh my goodness, fantastic, absolutely fantastic force field destroying these roaches. Meanwhile, this mothership is doing the right thing and making sure that these <laughs> they're running away. They're they're not everyone escapes back into the night. It's fantastic. Oh, except for these guys here who got left behind. They're like, everybody, where did you go? Oh, surprise, we protoss. So oh what hey, 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 hey. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, so cute. A little zergling just nippling. So now these these probes are returning back to work. They're off strike. Uh, their contract was hit and uh, an agreement was made, so they're allowed to go back to work. Um, Zaros, though, now he's like, oh, none of that shenanigans. Let's meanwhile, back in his base, we got he's upgrading now. I'm he's he's putting down a oh he's throwing down another hatchery. He's going to go for a, uh, a third. Protoss, um, Zaros really hefting down on the second. Going to robotics bay. This is great. The Colossus is out. Um, so, right now, I, I definitely would see Zaros, yeah, Zaros is, is putting up, pulling up in the army supply, but his, it's that quality over the quantity in this case right now, uh, his, those roaches will not be, as long as Zaros macros properly with the force field, those roaches will not be a match, oh, will not be a match for the Colossus, see what I mean, here comes that force field, cutting off those roaches, not allowing them, that, that Colossus is not being targeted, so it's good. I was going to say, he needs to pull back a little bit. This guy is getting squashed. These roaches are are frightened. Frightened roaches quickly running back. Zoros is not pursuing. Uh, feeling confident with that, that last attack there. Um, feeling very confident. Yep, yeah, pulling up ahead in the, in the army supply. And... 
Yep, definitely. Oh, he's killed 33 against versus uh, 12. Now, right now, it looks like he's trying to figure out what he's going to do here. No problem. He's thinking about, should I, should I, I guess he's going to try to, nope, he was checking for an expansion. I thought he was going to try to go for these rocks here, uh, but that was not his intention. Instead, he was just making sure there's not like a little expansion he could get a little nick off of. Meanwhile, back in the base, we got... Uh, we got some uh, some defensive units being built here, and we're gonna see if swarm host. Oh my name! I totally had forgotten the swarm host. The swarm hosts are getting. I really don't like them to be honest. Ugly little units, but I'm one of those people that I'd be like, I wouldn't make you because you're kind of ugly. <laughs> I'm kidding. I guess I I would make it because it's obviously useful. But they are ugly creatures. That's why I don't play Zerg. I like I like pretty creatures. Oh, I, uh, void raid saw you and it's like get out. Get out to your little overlord. Zaros is trying to build. Probably a little confused at why he can't build. Uh, <laughs> this is exactly it. Zaros is like, um, build Nexus. Why can't I build a Nexus? That's because this little guy here is sleeping under the sand, and that would make a very bad foundation to build on top of a roach. Meanwhile, there's a Zergling also doing the same here, just chilling. Zaros is probably very conf Oh, there it is. I'll just say, Zaros is just... I would imagine if I was Zaros, I'd be like, WTF. But Zaros is clearly much cleverer than I would. I would have probably tried at least three to four more times before I actually realized that there was something underneath. I would just think that I'm an idiot and I don't know how to click. Um, that's not the case for here. Zaros already um, has already pumped out those um, those Colossi. He's got three up, three Colossi. Colossus, Colossi, yes, I was right, Colossi, plural, mm, plural, and he's already putting down the third base, while the Zerg has fourth, and, the, oh, the Overseer has, is in is in heat, clearly deciding that this Observer would make a great mighty friend, he is clearly following him to anywhere this Observer goes, probably not very useful in his, you know, in, in hindsight, I would imagine that this Overseer could be doing something much more important than following an observer. Zoros, though, is deciding to tell his, uh, his observer to go do some things and keep, keep this overseer from being a problem. Swarm hosts not really doing it. Like, they're literally just being defensive. So, uh, hopefully, at some point, both these players... Ah, see, this is why I suggested it wasn't very clever to be following him. But now this Void Raid is going to be poking this overseer Oh, threw a couple changelings down, and each one of those changelings were destroyed. How silly! Um, no one's planning for attack. This, this is. I'm not gonna make a. I come from Warcraft Three. I love Warcraft Three, and in Warcraft Three, there'd have been some hero harassment, but I won't bring that up because that'd be silly. Because this is a Starcraft cast. Anyways, destructible rocks protected by my cannons. And meantime, both players just kind of taking a chilling here, deciding which ones to do. More swarm hosts continuously putting out these swarm hosts. A very strong, to, like, just like a, a defensive barricade here. The observer, has that observer gone back to doing its thing? Okay, so the observer has gone back to doing its thing, watching like a peeping tom. Creep tumor is pushing down the creep. Swarm host constantly popping out these little locusts, little gross little grub creatures. Um, ah, here we go. The corruptor, corruptors are up and running, going through the upgrades, slowing down upgrades in the evolution chamber. We're gonna start seeing some plus one plus ones. Zaros already plus two on attack, which is gonna be pretty pretty da dangerous. Right now, Zaros actually probably has an advantage if he was to go and attack. It's not looking that the corruptors are gonna be very problematic. Um, when it comes to these colossuses, but colossi, sorry, colossuses, colossi. Oh my god, is that a? It's a mothership core. Is he evolving? I really feel like we should have the Pokemon music here. I feel like it is necessary. It's like the dun 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 dun, and then he evolves is like a mothership core. He evolves to the mothership. You guys know what song I was singing, all right? I'm not the best at humming. Okay, these Corruptors are now going to be a big problem for these Colossus. Um, I'm pretty sure that these Colossus are not going to make it through the night. <laughs> a Tempest has joined the army, though. Mothership Corps is about 50%, no, 75% down, and more Tempests are on their way. 
from the Stargate. I don't know. He may want to throw down a second Stargate to be able to make sure that he can push down uh, multiple ten Tempests uh, at a time. I don't know how effective a single Tempest is going to be in this, this army, but I guess if you have a good mixture, it will be problematic. This Mothership Core, though, may be a, a good transition. We'll see. Having the, the cloaking. This is also before the... Uh, a few changes, so we'll see. Yep, do we still have Vortex? We do not. Oh, yeah, this is now evolved. Mah, mah, mah. There it is. Okay, so yeah, this is pre Vortex removal patch, obviously. Um, that happened last night. Or, yes. Meanwhile, these locusts are not going to make it because they don't have enough energy. But these guys are all invisible. And we're going to see. I don't think there's an overseer with this army. Oh, there is. Never mind. I take that back. So that means Zaros must of yep he is exposed well his yep there goes the observer mm, nah well we got a, a a fifth and a sixth wraith being thrown down uh, not a lot of scouting going along on Zaros's part to know that this is happening um, again Zergling uh, operating in a way that is going to make it very irritating for Zaros to throw down his fourth but Zaros eventually gets the fourth down regardless of his problems and we got a seventh base okay so we got fifth sixth and seventh base all in operation right now did i count that right yeah i did i did count that right ha 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 so really there needs to be a i would imagine oh is that plus three so nope actually the attacks are all upgraded on zaros and now zaros is going for defense and we're going to see now if Zaros is going to hit it up. Zaros is effect effectively, he's maxed versus uh, No Prime, who's at 169 in terms of capacity. Both players... Storm is finally... Now, Storm is on its way. I guess Zaros, noticing that the Corruptors are here, realizing that his Colossuses are not going to be as effective as he had hoped. Uh, but this army here really isn't made up of a lot. We're looking up, uh, probably is this not very much coming from this army. Like, is this, yeah, this is spine crawlers. Oh my god, that was my phone. I just need to remember to turn off my phone when I'm casting. Yes, if you did hear it, my phone does have uh, Demacia. I am a huge Jarvan fan from League of Legends. But let's get back to the cast. In the meantime, we got Corruptors. Popping more corruptors on their way. This is this is not gonna be. I, this could be interesting. I'm not really. Oh, so right now that zergling, all it saw was a mothership and a lot of people in pain. A long, lot of people about to bring the pain. No vision, um, because there's no overseer. Spine crawlers here. So right now these tempests are gonna give some problems. These uh these spine crawlers are practically nullified because they can't see a thing. Now right now these uh the broodlords and the the corruptors are going to be a very big problem for everybody right now because these broodlords are going to be a pain. Zaros realizing that this is not in his favor decides to pull back. If he could get this uh get this uh this overseer then he he wouldn't be in so much trouble because then they wouldn't be able to see. But this overseer is well in the back, comfortable where he is, saying, "I'm gonna chill." Uh, right now, it's an, an exchange of energy because these locusts cost nothing except energy. Zaros so picking off spine crawlers just from the side. Locust um, uh, swarm hosts throwing out their locusts, sending the locusts in. Oh, tempest are out a bit. Ooh, fantastic! Corruptors fly. Oh. Corruptors take a bit of damage. There he is. Guess the Overseer. Oh, but three more take their place. This is where it's going to become a problem because now the Corruptors have jumped in on their own, which is kind of silly because they are without the Broodlords. That was a very silly play for no, uh, no End Prime. I kept calling him No Prime. It's No End Prime. And that was very bad for him. He should definitely sent his Corruptors without their Broodlord pals, leaving them exposed to the Stalkers. These Stalkers just do have blink could have chased would have been very silly though to chase under the broodlords because that's what you wanted you wanted that the uh, the corruptors did not have their broodlord support returning back to base trying to escort his um escort his pals getting another upgrade for plus two armor or is that plus three that looks like plus three yep yeah, plus three armor 
Tempest is going to catch these little strangler roaches who are going to try to get the high ground, which is not in their favor. Uh, it's blinking in underneath. These corruptors have moved themselves into a very bad position because now the Tempest are going to hit them in the back as they leave. This is bad positioning. The swarm hosts are now porting under or brewing under, but without enough corruptors to cause any problems, these colossi are going to say hello. These tempests are now going to go up against these corruptors. Now refocusing their efforts on the colossi. Colossi are not are all being honey badgers and saying I don't give one piece about corruptors. And this is this is it. This looks like a GG because. These colossi are just making a absolute mess of everything. Fantastic, fantastic. Corruptors now trying to be a little, I guess a little, little, little mad that they didn't do their their job very well. And oh, never mind. Take that back. Here comes a whole bunch more. Oh, and then we see the GG, the GG. Ooh. So, that was fantastic. Uh, lesson to be learned here. Okay, so here's, here's two lessons. So, because this is obviously this is a learning series, and you're learning with me. So, lesson one. Check the length of the replay before loading up the replay. That's lesson one. Lesson two. When moving corruptors, and you have broodlords move them together all right so kind of like dry lessons here it's not really you may or may not learn anything from that but anyways that was fantastic play from Zaros. hopefully i will have another replay and i'll maybe get another one out tonight if not either or hope everyone has a great night enjoyed my casting feel free to send i'm gonna upload this to youtube pretty much right after i finish this cast feel free to throw me a comment on there let me know how i did Tell me if there's something I missed. Obviously, I watch a lot of casting. There's some things I'm still learning. Throw me your feedback. Say, hey, Drekken, did you think about doing this? Or, Drekken, hey, why didn't you do this when you were casting? Help me. But anyways, let's end this off this cast. Thanks, guys, for watching. You are the